Do we say actions when it comes to yeah. podcasts, or we just go straight into the podcast? You could say action. What's up, Corey? What's good? How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud of you. First podcast episode. Yep. You know that? I feel so special. Do you? Yeah, it's because I was the first one, no? Well, first guest. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, also, I feel like you're the easier person for me to talk to. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't really, like... Uh, yeah. You know, I don't, I, I get nervous. I work with you the most, so it's easier to talk to you, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I like okay. it. Anyway, yeah. um, so welcome to the uh, podcast, El High TV Connect. I have uh, my guest here, known as Koi, official, I am official Koi. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah? I'm really good. I'm, I'm so grateful to be here and, um, yeah, connect with you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a little nervous about this thing because, you know, I can. It's funny because it's like I've never done a podcast. I know you haven't, so I'm just I'm so excited to see what you got cooking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, um, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. So okay. tell the people about so, yourself. So okay, sounds good. So I am Koi, and mm-hmm. I act with El Hush. For a lot of people that know me, they see me on El Hush TV. I also own a jewelry business. Mm-hmm. I'm also a mom. Mm-hmm. And yeah, shoot. Hey, listen, jack of all trades. I do a lot of things. Okay, that's nice. That's <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, you're Kenyan. Yeah. Yes, Kenyan. Right. Mm-hmm. So I came here when I was nine. Mm. Yeah, so I was born in Kenya, came here when I was nine, lived in so- uh, North Cal, then moved to Washington, and then now came to LA. Okay. So I've spent the majority of my life in America. But so I you're st- American. Yeah, but but I still have a lot of Kenyan in me because I speak the language, okay. I know the culture, but not too much. So I try to look at myself as like Kenyan American, but like half and half. When you say you speak the language, are you like super fluent with it? Or you still like you make like, you know, mistake? Because I'm not fluent in Fulani anymore. Really? Um, so so in my country we have the national language, okay, mm-hmm. so we have English and then we have the national language, which is Swahili. Everybody knows that in the country, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have the tribal languages, so the mother tongue languages, which is Kikuyu, okay. right? So I'm fluent in Swahili, okay. but Kikuyu, which is the mother tongue, which is like the tribal one, yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm still rough a little bit, but I do understand. I understand everything. I think that's very impressive, actually, because you came here nine. Mm-hmm. You still are fluent. Yeah. How do you do it? Like, do you speak it to other people or how, how does it go? You know, that's, a, that's really interesting because, you know, when I came here, I, you know, obviously living with my mom, mm-hmm. she was always talking Swahili or Kikuyu, mm-hmm. right? So just hearing it mm-hmm. and then also tracing back to back home, okay. I was talking it and hearing my family talking and I got to the age, I think nine, nine years old was still a good age okay. to come to America and not forget because I do have cousins that came here at like four and they don't, they don't even know the language. Well, that's the thing. It's like, right. I think I came here between 10 and 11. Mm-hmm. And I don't mm. speak Fulani. Uh, like the way I should. Like I can understand fluently, mm. but to speak it is a problem. Like I take my time. Right. Sometimes I don't know how to say certain things. Or sometimes I don't even know what certain things mean. Right. So that's why I'm so, so impressed how you manage to just stay fluent. Yeah. I think it's just talking it a lot, I guess, with my friends back home. Mm-hmm. You know, because of my friends. Mm-hmm. I still talk it. And then just... I think I was just around a lot of people all the time mm-hmm. talking that language back home. That's impressive. You know, like we weren't talking a lot of English, even though that's what we were talking in school. Yeah. Like at home, Swahili and Kikui were the majority of the only things that we were hearing all the time. That's funny. Uh, my mom, yeah. uh, when I was younger, it's funny because I think when I came here, did you speak English when you came here? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so I think that's what helped you out. Because when I came ah. here, I had to learn English. Okay. So I had to put Fulani to the side mm. to learn another language. Oh, that's so And then once I learned English, I kind of didn't really go back to Fulani. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like I French, see. too, because I spoke French at one point. I was fluent. Yeah. But then I lost it uh, because I was focused on learning English. Learning English, right. Yeah. To be, to so be able you to be already good. knew it before you came here? Yes. That's uh, the one thing that we're taught in school already. Okay. Yeah, we're taught that first, and then, of course, Swahili. Mm-hmm. We still are taught that. Mm-hmm. And then Kikuyu, which is the mother tongue, we don't get taught that in schools. Mm-hmm. Only the national ones, like English and Swahili. Mm-hmm. Everyone must know those. Okay. But or in school at least. Everyone okay. must know those, but then the mother tongue, the tribal ones. Yeah. Those ones you learn at home. 
Oh. So hearing my mom talk to my grandma, my aunties, everybody at home, the, yeah, yeah. the you know house, the help, all that, they were all talking Swahili or Kikuyu. Oh, you know, so okay, it was really okay. easy for me to adapt it. Mm -hmm. um, talking Swahili was more uh, was more easier for me because that was more national, so all my friends would talk it. Mm -hmm. But Kikuyu, if I wasn't talking to my mom or my grandma or mm -hmm. anything like that, I wasn't really talking it much. Mm, okay. So that's the one I struggle with, even though I try, because yeah, my yeah. grandma doesn't speak English. So you have to communicate with her either in Kikuyu yeah. or in Swahili. Yeah, my grandma the same way. Like, I have to speak to her in Fulani. Yeah. But like I said, I can speak it because yeah. obviously I create Fulani content. It's just I struggle a lot with you it. struggle, yeah. 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 That, that dynamic is interesting because, you know, coming to America, right, and yeah. having to just adapt to the way yeah, that's, everyone that's talks interesting. here. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. fast forward, you and U.S., yeah, so in U.S., um, and then, uh, you know, like I said, I went to North Cal. Mm -hmm. I stayed there for a little while, mm -hmm. um, went to high school there. Mm -hmm. And then after I was done with high school, went to college in Washington, mm -hmm. and then moved to SoCal Okay. after that. Yeah. So how was your our, uh, teenage years in school? Like, how was it? Was it a... Uh... Man. What? Like coming from Africa? Yeah. Yo, culture shock. I don't know if it's like the same with you, Yeah. but... I was used to back home, like, first of all, wearing uniform. Okay. That was something we had to wear, mm -hmm. everyone back home. Mm -hmm. um, so coming to the school here, of course, my mom tried, because I, I grew up Catholic. Mm -hmm. So my mom tried to get us into, like, a Catholic school in America mm -hmm. um, where they were also wearing uniform. Mm -hmm. So kind of give it a similarity. But mm -hmm. I think, honestly, the biggest difference for me was just how diverse schools are here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to back home. Because back home, there's, like, a sense of, like, there's the morals that we all abide by. There's like the views and how we see things. Mm -hmm. But here, every kid is different. Mm -hmm. Like even talking about, like what do you mean I can't talk about Jesus or God yeah. in school? Like, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. not allowed to talk about those things. Yeah. But back home, like everyone is in unison. Everybody like religion is within it's, that yeah, circle where right. you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, and it doesn't have to be like, oh, these Christians got, but they, they still an understanding, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. here, it's like there's certain things you can't talk about. And then of course, um, I came here in fifth grade. Okay. So going into fifth grade, you know, just the questions that the kids were asking me and, you know, like, do you have giraffes in your backyard? <laughs> Why do you think that is? I think it's what they see on TV, yo. Because really? I'm like, how, how are you going to, did you guys wear leaves? And mind you, this is fifth grade, right? Yeah. I remember very well. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys wear leaves? Did you wear clothes? Mm -hmm. Did you entertain those questions? You know, or did I, you get offended when they used to ask you those things? I didn't get offended because at that time, I really didn't look at it as like they were trying to be disrespectful because yeah. that's the topic of racism, right? Like I never really knew that existed at all okay. until I came to America, Okay. right? Like until I was taught it. I didn't uh -huh. even know that that was a thing uh -huh. where people can discriminate against each other or even just have like, you know, not have the same, you know, or be ignorant or whatever mm -hmm, you can call mm -hmm. it. I didn't know that. So for me, it was just like, no, what do you mean? Like where it leaves? Like... That doesn't make any sense, yeah, you know? Yeah. And it just made me feel like they have no understanding. Yeah. They're only being shown whatever, or wherever they saw it, yeah, that's yeah. all they think it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Not knowing that, wow, we have like mansions back home. Like yeah. we have, we live like queens and kings. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, these areas that have poverty, uh -huh. but I mean, that's everywhere though. Like, right, right, of course right. it's more, Yeah. but uh, back home, but there's still, you know, there's still people that are living and doing well. Uh -huh. No, it's very interesting because I remember when I came here uh, going to school. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the reasons is um, I feel like now it's different because we have social media. So you can kind of see the world, you know, your phone, you see everything. True. So people look at it different. Yeah. But I think it's also because I don't know what it is because I feel like I had American friends, mm -hmm. but they didn't really travel globally like that. Like, their global travel wasn't, you know, yeah, yeah. like, so it's like, they have never been to Africa, so right. they don't know, right? Yeah. And um, also, if they do travel, a lot of times they might go to Europe, you know, right. and Europe is sounding kind of similar to America as right. far as, like, you know, the structure, but it's just a little different, obviously, with politics and stuff. But um, I think that's one of the things I realized, I was like, there was not traveling. Because mm -hmm. when yeah. you do go... Yeah. It's not what you think. Exactly. Like, it's funny. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen a wild, like, crazy animal in Africa. Like, I've never seen a lion. Mm. Like, they, we don't have that in Guinea. Oh, yeah. We don't have giraffes. We don't have all the things that 
you would think is in Africa. Because when you say that, like, oh, when you true. think, like, you have lions in Africa, you think every country has it. Right. No, no <laughs> they're not everywhere. Not everywhere, You know right. what I'm saying? I've never seen them. Yeah. yeah that's the one thing I realized. So right. I think people haven't traveled enough to, like, know that it's not what you think. It's not what you think. Yeah. yeah. I think that. And to just be open to learning because, like, you can't assume already so fast, right? Yeah. Because you don't know. Yeah. You can't assume. You just, you can say, oh, this is all I know about right, it. Can right. you teach me more? Right. But I think a lot of people are just like, oh, well, is this what you do? Is this how it's done? <laughs> is this what, what you had, you had lions chasing your, you guys? Yeah. I'm like, no. Like, think about, like, <laughs> just the fact that when they think, uh, like, if a lion chase you, you're not getting away. No, you're dead. Like, you're not, it's not even a chase. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. I see you and you are food and that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. see, that's also, like, it goes to, um, that was in fifth grade, right? Mm -hmm. How old were we? We were, like, 10. Mm -hmm. You know, we're young. Mm -hmm. So that's the consciousness that they were in. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, it makes sense. They're it's young, not their they fault. don't know. They it's don't not their know. fault, yeah, they yeah, don't yeah, know, yeah. right? It makes sense. Yeah, so that's what I encountered in elementary school. Okay. But then you go to high school, and um, I had gone to a, a public high school, mm -hmm. and I also attended a private high school, so I got to see, like, the differences mm -hmm. between it. The, obviously, the, public, uh, the private high school reminds me more of back home, mm -hmm. the schools back home, mm -hmm. just because of the structure mm -hmm. and everything, mm -hmm. but the public high schools, whew. And then having a Kenyan mom mm -hmm. that has very Kenyan, you know, like understanding in how to live, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to um, teach me how to live as a Kenyan in America, but mm -hmm. I'm going to public school that okay. is in America, yeah. of which she has no idea how it is. How it is. Yeah, I wish I wish every African parent that came here, like my parents or your parents, went to school here just to understand. Man. Like my mom used to tell me. I didn't bring you here to make friends. I don't want you making friends. Right. Like, how do you yeah. walk around a school that has 4,000 students and she don't expect you to be, talk to one, one person, person and be friends? Right. Like, I've never understood that concept, exactly. right? Exactly. But I also kind of get it because mm -hmm. I think, um, I think when they say it, it's not that they don't want you to make friends. I think they say it in a way where it's like, we, we don't want you to get mixed up with the wrong crowd. Right. I think the that's focus. what they, but they don't know how to articulate that in a way. Yeah. You see it that way. Right. Because they say don't make friends. Don't make friends. And that means don't talk to nobody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And and I think one of the things I feel like I wish they all went to school here. Mm -hmm. Like we're about high school, not college, because exactly. like if you go to college, it's different. Like, it's different. But if you went to like high school, middle school, and you see how kids, because we have kids. Yeah. It's hard for us to not interact with other kids. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But uh, yeah, that was one of the things. But <laughs> <laughs> funny thing is, uh, I remember when I was in school here, though, when yeah. I first came here, uh, they had the system where, like, uh, that was very interesting to me. Like, you can call my mom because mm. you had, like, a phone here mm -hmm. at your desk. Mm -hmm. that you can call my parents oh. and tell them if I did something wrong in class. Right. That was thing like we never had that like I, when I was going to school back home right. in Guinea we didn't have that. You didn't have that. So yeah. they had that here, mm -hmm. and I remember mm -hmm. I was one of them students where I'm like, I cannot let the teacher call my parents. Yeah. Right. I cannot right. let the teacher like because yeah. you know back home if somebody talks about your kid, mm -hmm. it's almost like your kid might seem like they're disgracing you. Yes. Right. Right. So we have that mindset where when we come here, it don't matter if the teacher's wrong. Right. We do not want to be in trouble. Right. right. But then I look at like the American kids, man, they're like, when they call my mom, I don't call care. Them. Exactly. <laughs> like, what? I'd be like, yeah. What? what? Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a culture shock for me too. Yeah. Being here and uh, kids talking back to their parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Like what? Like that to me, just I couldn't. Like I just could not comprehend. You couldn't like understand that. it. I couldn't understand it at yeah. all. Yeah. Cause that's taboo. Yeah. That's a curse. It is. You know what I'm saying? It is. And so it's just crazy that how just open they are. Yeah. And then in schools, like you said, mm -hmm. like our schools back home, we used to get disciplined by the teachers. I know. The teachers had permission yeah, to the discipline us. Yeah. I feel like us. not just the teacher. Back home, I feel like anybody older than you can discipline. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. It's like a right that's not written, but it's like a law that everybody understands. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Like the the respect your elders thing is huge. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, back home, and so coming here and that not. I think the Indians have that too. The Indians. I, oh, okay. I noticed that with them too. Like they yeah. very um. It's a. But I think even the way we speak, though, for example, like for us. If you're older than me, mm -hmm. right, I don't address you by you. Right. 
I gotta say they, they because oh. it's a form of respect. Uh huh. Um, okay. In in my country, right? Um, yeah. So if I say you, it's almost as if I'm disrespecting you. It's but in America, yeah. We're the same age. We're not the same age. Right. It's you. It's you. Or yeah. he, he. Or she. Okay. You don't put a day as a sign of respect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. back home we have that. Like, mm -hmm. we'll say day. Yeah. But it's more so to basically show respect. To show respect. Yeah. yeah. It's not because there's so many. It's a plural thing. It's more of a respect thing. Right. Because you can't call an old person you. You. Right. It's like they you know, disrespect them. So it's so, it's so interesting. It's so interesting, yeah. Yeah, because back home, that's like one of the things, like, man, you got to respect your elder people. Yeah, you got to you gotta respect your elders. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, I see some of that, like, obviously in the African-American community, mm -hmm. you know, when they respect the... Oh, like, they do. Yeah. Especially like the, like the, like, I feel OGs, like uh, yeah. the OGs. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, they really yeah. pay homage. Because they talk about, like, the whole grandma, you know. Right. They have the whole grandma concept. Yes. It's kind of similar to us because... The grandma was like the person that kind of, you know, yeah. made sure everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. Connected I, everybody together. Exactly. Made sure everybody was Yeah, you know, no, that's true. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, so I, I see that. that but, um, no, there's, in the schools, yeah. you get to see everything. Yeah. And then you go home and your mom is expecting you to be like, just yeah. like a, you know, like and, an African. And, 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 and now you're like, you're like conflicted because you don't you, know how to act. You don't know how to act. <laughs> you're like, well, I just saw this kid say like exactly. no to their mom so i'm yeah. like should yeah. i try it right but then you might die no but you might die <laughs> that there you might die or you may get sent back to africa yeah oh, man, that, was a, that was a threat they used to say that all the time <laughs> yeah remember when your parents were like i'm gonna send you back yeah i'm gonna send you back home man i'd be like no don't send me back yeah, exactly he's like what you're gonna go back home but now looking yeah. back yeah. i'm like if they would say send me i'm gonna say i'm gonna send me back and like, yeah yeah because yeah. you can come back later right yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's even better at times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, dang. Like, yeah. I remember this... back then, I'd be like, no, don't send me back. Okay, yeah. I'll behave. Yeah. That was the thing. Yeah, I think for me, like, the reason why I resisted wanting to go back all the time is because mm -hmm. of the friends that I had started to make. Okay. You know? And just how open people are. You know? Like, I learned a lot of my, you know, communicating with my friends and being open, being able to express myself through yeah. my friends. Not yeah. even home. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. culturally, like, I don't know, for sure in my household, like, it wasn't easy for me to express how I feel about things because we're looked at as kids mm -hmm. just a kid you're mm -hmm. a kid you, do you don't what know you do. it's like back home uh the older people always know more than you exactly. and that's not the reality and that's not the reality because look at like the world we're living today like right. younger people know about technology more than older people exactly you know yeah yeah that back home is the reality is i'm older and Ex i know more no i know more yeah. so i never felt able to express myself mm -hmm. so i just always the people that i could express myself with was my friends in school mm -hmm. they knew me more than my mom knew who i was mm -hmm. you know like my mom only knew who she wanted to know yeah. of me you yeah. know which is like i had to abide by all the rules of the right, house right, you know right. what i mean like and be and i mean i was a good person but it's just getting to really know me mm -hmm. was my friends got to know me. Mm -hmm. And that's why every time she'd be like, I'm taking you back home. I'm like, dang, but my friends know me. Like, back, what do you mean? Like, you know? And um, yeah, so that was really challenging in high school for sure. Yeah. I moved schools like seven times in high school. Like my mom, Whoa. I know. She was like not into like any friends that I made. And she was like, oh, no, 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 I don't like yeah, this. Yeah, she was like, Psh, we off to the next one. Yeah, it's funny, my mom. Yeah, you're saying with my mom, because I didn't meet my friends. And it's funny, I mean, I, you can knock them off for it, but sometimes you can't. Cause like, I'm be honest with you. Like, if I look back at my life, mm -hmm. personally, I don't think there's much that I would change. Mm -hmm. Looking back at it now, yeah. Because I feel like the way my parents disciplined me kind of helped me. Like, if I look at all my friends, like, I met most of the people around me today mm -hmm. in college. Yeah. So I was outside of my parents, like uh, house or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I had more freedom to be able to meet. But then around that time, I'm old. Mm -hmm. So I can make better decisions. Better decisions, yeah. You know, Absolutely. because the people around you can influence you. So I get why the parents don't want you to be around anybody. Yes. You know, but like I said, they don't know how to articulate that. They just say, no. don't meet people. Yeah. Which is not the right way. I agree 100%. Yeah. You know, like, because looking at my dynamic, you know, my mom was a single mom. Yeah. And so, like, on top of working, you know, coming here, you right. got to work. Right, right, right. So she had multiple jobs. Right. And trying to keep track of me coming home from school and then her coming from work mm -hmm. and trying to get everything. To, like, that was a lot for mm -hmm. single parents. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I totally see mm -hmm. how she tried to, like, really help in sheltering me from mm -hmm. that because, yeah, we do. Like, if she had kept me sheltered until I was older enough mm -hmm. to, better, to, to be grown and make better decisions, mm -hmm. yeah, it would have been way better mm -hmm. as opposed to me trying to figure out stuff and make friends at that age mm -hmm. that really didn't even serve me at that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, 
I could see that. So like, I really do appreciate that even though, you know, like I rebelled. Yeah. I rebelled just because of just not knowing how to navigate. Well, if you tell somebody don't open that door, they yeah. want to see what's behind that door. Exactly. Chances are they might open that door. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. yeah, like, you know, like don't have boyfriend, don't yeah. have this. Don't. And it's like, dang, you're seeing all these girls. And then also like, just seeing how like the parents like interact with their kids mm -hmm. and like with their boyfriends, I'm like, wow, like why can't we do that? Yeah. But no, yeah. you couldn't. And I'm like, what? Huh? Well, they gonna... Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, yeah, it's, meanwhile, it's so I had my younger brother that was watching me go through all of that. Go He's like, I'm the... making the right decisions. I'm... Like, who made these ones? <laughs> Let me go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's funny. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It's like, um, Man, the childhood was very something else. Yeah, growing it up was. Here. Um, right. yeah. yeah, growing up here is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward, um, you're an adult, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're in LA. How did you get into whole the entertainment aspect of mm. your life? Like, how did that come about? Wow. Um, so, for as long as I can remember, I always wanted, like, I used to sing. I used to sing. Yeah, you told me this recently, and I was pissed because I'm like, why haven't we made a character of you singing? Like, why it's like okay before i go before you answer your thing it's the same thing you did with the whole african stuff <laughs> i've worked with you for about what a year mm -hmm. yeah not knowing you can do the whole accent yeah yeah and play one goy right. shiro well we didn't know that we didn't know that you literally were supposed to do one video i don't know if you remember we did one video we were supposed to do more right and that video went well, and then we kept doing it. I'm like, what? What is this talent? Yeah, I She's know. Hiding. <laughs> Why are you hiding your talent? No, you know what? It's so crazy. Like, so the singing thing, mm -hmm. I used to sing. So that was something that I loved to do. Mm -hmm. My mom, you know, every time we'd go places, she'd have me go up there and sing. And mm -hmm. then, of course, in church, mm -hmm. I sang. Um, when I was in um, ninth grade, when I had gone back to boarding, I sang in the mm -hmm. choir as the mm -hmm. soloist, and I loved it. But when I came to America, you know, I, I didn't pursue it so much. And then I tried out for The Voice and didn't get accepted. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, oh, I'm going to throw the bag in, you know what ah. I mean? And then not only that, but, but, I don't know if you'll agree to this, but in our culture, if it's not being a lawyer, doctor, engineer, mm -hmm. then that's just a hobby that can take a back seat. That's true. Focus on school, and then we'll get to that later. That's Do true. that on the weekends. That's true. So... For me, when I just stopped it, I was like, okay, well, I don't need to think of this anyway because I need to be going to school to be a lawyer. Yeah, you need to figure I, out something that's more yeah, um, secure. I guess. Exactly, that's yeah. more secure. So I just didn't think of it much, right? Yeah. Even though I regret today not having continued to pursue it mm -hmm. and also letting, you know, just letting myself just live, leave it alone. That was mm -hmm. something that I love to do. But um, yeah, so I just, now I just kind of sing in the shower and in the car and stuff like that. But as far as acting, Yo, I didn't know that I could do that. Like, I used to want to be on TV to do commercials. Mm -hmm. So, like, Flow from Progressive. Mm -hmm. Every time I would see her, I'm like, yo, one day I'm going to be the face of companies and I'm going to be doing commercials. And so I got into that. Mm -hmm. I started doing commercials. Um, I started booking roles and for commercial work. Mm -hmm. And so when I came to L.A. is when I started to say, okay, let me see about, like, acting mm -hmm. and see how I could do it. And initially... I tried, you know, like just shooting with um, other influencers mm -hmm. or content creators, mm -hmm. and I really was struggling. And now looking um, fast forward to now, like mm -hmm. how I see it now, mm -hmm. I just didn't know my identity. As an actress. As an actress. Okay. Because, and this is something that I also struggled with back when I first came to America, mm -hmm. like being looked at as an African American, mm -hmm. but I'm really African, mm -hmm. right? So being seen as like a black girl, mm -hmm. right? Like having, like, I'm not just a regular black girl. Like I don't understand, I didn't understand the African-American culture when mm -hmm. I first came here. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody had already seen me as that because of my skin. Right, right, right. So it was really hard. So I had to adapt to the, I had to go find friends that were African-American and kind of be like them. But I'm like, no, we're, we are still different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not, do you get what I'm saying? Like exactly there's still like saying. a difference right, right, right. between it's us. A, it's like, like you having an identi identity, Crisis, crisis, yeah, and but I, we I, share the same color skin, right. so like everyone thinks that I'm like a black girl, but I'm really African. But I really wanted to to connect and be like an African American. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'll dress like it. I'll even talk like. You're trying it. to fit in. I was trying to fit in. Yeah. But it's not until I got older you and realized. realized that oh, I'm, I'm Kenyan. Yeah. I'm a full Kenyan. Right. So for me, when I so in in relation to acting, um, the roles that I was getting as a black girl, I was doing roles that just 
I just didn't feel like resonated with me. Like mm -hmm. I didn't know how to do certain improv yeah. talking as this. Like right, how right, would right. she say it? You know? Um, and so I kind of let that go for a little bit. Uh -huh. Until, um, and then I, had, I even deleted my Instagram. I was done with it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to focus on commercials. Oh, that's crazy. Keep it there. That's crazy. I had deleted my Instagram. I delete, I was like ready, just rebrand. That's crazy. And then was it, was it 2021 is when, um, is when I reactivated my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to now really align with who I am. That's okay. when I really was like, all right, no, I'm, this is me. Okay. Like I got to honor myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's when we connected. And I was like, remember? What did I say when go I first ahead, told, when you hit me up? You was ahead. like, I'm trying hit to shoot. Me, what did you say? Hit me. <laughs> hit me. Go ahead. I was like, Tell okay. the story. Tell the story. I was like, okay, so yeah, I'd love to shoot, but I don't do this, do this, do that, do this. Nah, hold on. Cause you saying it nicer. I'm going to say exactly what happened. So I sent this girl a DM, right? Because I had seen you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I seen you, mm -hmm. but I was like, and it's funny because you didn't really speak in that video. Mm -mm. But I was like, I was thinking, I was like, you African. Because mm -hmm. you, you had the whole African thing. You played like an African girl in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, so you African. Mm -hmm. And I've always talked about creating African content. You know, I started with creating African content, like mm -hmm. Fulani, yeah. before I did English, mm -hmm. like American content. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to create African content. I did. But I never really had like the people to do it with. Right. Because you have to find the right people and you have to find people that kind of want to do it in right. order to do it. Right. So I reached out to you, but at the time I wasn't reaching out to you to do like specifically like African. I was just reaching out to you to like work yes. and then see where this can go. Mm -hmm. And I remember I sent you a DM because I was working on this series at the time that was really big. And, um, and I reached out to you and uh, you hit me with, I just want to let you know I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not gonna wear this. I'm not gonna wear that. I was like, um, I just I read the message like I don't I don't know like why she think that way. But I also didn't understand. I also kind of understood the concept like a lot of girls when they come here, mm -hmm. niggas would like try to schedule them and but like this is what you want them, but you really not them what you want. So it's like right. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And it's like I get that. I, yeah. I get that. So you have to be careful. Yes. So for me, it's always like you don't have to do nothing you don't want to do. Right. You don't actually yeah. like. For the most part, I, I don't even tell people how to dress for the most part. Like, right. It's rare, unless it's a specific role. I'm like, okay, well, you're going to need business casual today. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'll be like, okay, you need this. But specifically, you kind of, you know, yeah. dress how you want to. Right? Dress how you want to, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, that then, was interesting. But then I was like, but we can shoot, though. I'm down. Yeah, and then you <laughs> was like, um, yeah, you, we can shoot. And I was like, okay, cool. So pull up. And yeah. then um, we met. And uh, we shot, and the funny thing is that thing we shot never came out. That one never came out. Yeah. I, I always thought that that was my uh, that was my audition. Audition? Yeah, I was like, oh, he's probably auditioning me, and he's just being respectful. Did you when you walked with us? I was like, did you think we was gonna do any more after that, or what no, did you I, think? No, I think we were because the way we had talked about it, you mm -hmm. were like, no, this is good, this is good. I think when it didn't come out, I was like, oh, maybe maybe that was just the auditioning. Um, but did you also? How soon did you think it was gonna come out? I don't know. I honestly don't. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's very, sometimes you like, for example, sometimes you'll work with people and then they'll think, like, you're going to shoot today and it'll come out tomorrow. Or some right. people understand that it might not come out or it might come out like two months. Too like, right. we got a lot of stuff that we do. That, like, we shot the, um, the African, uh, when you had an African girl, the new season is just now coming, coming out. We out, shot that, true. what, eight months ago, maybe? Right, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe because, like, you know, the people that I had shot with previously, some mm -hmm. people, the style is different, right? Mm -hmm. Some people can shoot one day and it'd be out tomorrow. Yeah. But some people, it takes a couple days, yeah. whatever it is. So I just didn't even know. Yeah. But I just was like, wait, I never saw that one. What yeah. happened to it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny. And then it's kind of yeah. cool. And I kind of like that. I, I, I like when people are uh, upfront about working because I'm kind of, one of the things about me, I'm going to be honest with you, mm -hmm. if... Like, if I tell you, let's shoot, yeah. and you say, what are we going to do? I'm terrible at telling you what the idea is mm -hmm. or how it's going to go. I'm right. so terrible. Like, if I tell you, you might be like, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. But once you see it, it makes more sense. It makes more sense. Uh, so that's one of the things. I've always been pretty bad when people ask me, I'm like, hey, let's work. They're like, okay, what are we about to do? I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this. Right. Because, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I do know how to say it, but it's just like, it's not going to make sense. Right. You know? Yeah. And, uh, but then when you see it, you're like, oh, I get it. Right. I get a lot of that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, 
we started shooting, but we did English though first. We did English. We didn't do African to like maybe eight yeah. months to a year later. Yeah. So yeah. we're doing English content, we're right. shooting. Mm -hmm. And and it's funny because I always felt like we didn't have anything. I don't know if I told you, but I was like, I always felt like we didn't have anything to me that was like, um, this is it. Because like, I love creating like series. Yeah. And I always like to look for one where I'm like, okay, I feel like this has some type of impact. Mm -hmm. But at the time I was like, we our videos are cool, you know. Right. Um, but I didn't feel like there was anything that was impactful at the time. Right. And then we did uh, When You Holler At Her. Yeah, uh, African, African Girl. Girl. Yeah. Funny thing is, remember I switched the title for that. Yeah. That wasn't originally what it was. That was, right. uh, the concept with that was, it's basically the African girl that I can't smash or something like right. that. Right, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was like the, it was the same idea, but that was the title that I had in mind. Right. At first. I was like, I don't like that title name anymore. Yeah. After the edit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, and uh, then I was like, what did I say? I was like, could I talk in my accent? Yeah. And, and then I, we started, and I was like, and it's funny, because even when we was shooting it, like, it didn't hit me how good it was till the edit was done. I was like, yeah. wait, yeah. you should have literally just bodied this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, that's so impressive, because I'm African, but I can't do the accent like you. Right. But that's not because I can't. It's just because... I think people think the African accent is the not typical Nigerian accent. Mm -mm. And in my country, we already have like five languages. Right. So we have so many accents already. And I have an accent for a Guinean, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I have an accent for all around right. Africa. Yeah. Because yeah. the Nigerian accent, I think, is the more popular one. So everybody tends to think Just an African accent is a Nigerian accent. Right. And it's not. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. It's, I think um, I have to give it up to like just taking that break that I did to mm -hmm. really realign to who I was mm -hmm. in L.A., mm -hmm. especially in L.A. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't know who you, you are in L.A., you'll get lost. I know. Yeah. So taking that time, time off and just really realigning to who I was mm -hmm. and what I wanted and how I wanted to appear mm -hmm. um, when I go out there, I think that really helped because I was so ready to just explore who I am mm -hmm. as a Kenyan woman mm -hmm. in America that's lived here majority of her life. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just came natural to me to ask like, how, let me see if I can, cause when I go back home, every time I go back home, mm -hmm. I don't ever talk like this. Yeah. Because it's that thing of like, if they hear you talking like this, everything is gonna be a hundred times more expensive. The price is changing <laughs> off the top. It's exactly. like, wait, hold on, wait, what did yeah. you say? Yeah. <clears throat> How much is this? Oh, oh, no, that's exactly. an American accent. I think that's like at least $500. Yeah. yeah. And then also, like, for me, it's like just being able to connect with people. Like, I want to just become, like, who I am when I'm home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, wanna, I don't want to be out here, like, talking like this. And I'm like, no, I can connect with you. Yeah. You understand me, I understand you. Right. And we're good. But some people have said, oh, like, what are you trying to do? You're trying to be fake. Why are you putting on that American accent? I'm like, no, it's not even that. Mm -hmm. I just have the ability to just sound a certain kind of way mm -hmm. when I'm in certain places to adapt to the, you know, mm -hmm. easier to flow. Yeah. And then I'm able to do that back home. That's, I, I don't know if it's a gift that I have, but I feel like a lot of Kenyans may, maybe. But well, that's the thing. It's like English is part of y'all somewhat language. Yes, so it is. So that's why I was like, okay, it makes sense why you can able to speak English and still keep your Swahili yes. and not lose it. Versus right. me, like English was not the language in Guinea at all. Right. It was more like mm. French, Fulani, and like five other other languages mm -hmm. so it was those but when i came here i had to let those go they to learn go. english right and then i never got them back wow so yeah. i think that's what makes you okay it makes more sense because you guys speak english now yeah we yeah we do i mean a majority like in the yeah, city for sure in the right. countryside you may find people that don't yeah right but they will speak swahili which right. is the second under like everyone no swahili right but kikuyu no kikuyu yeah. not everybody does okay. unless you're a kikuyu then you know Kikuyu. Yeah. But it's the tri different tribes, right? Yeah. No, but that's how I was able to adapt to my accent. No, when it I was came cool. Off. It was nice, right? It was, I mean. That's what happens when you align to yourself, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and it's funny. And then fast forward. Yeah. I've known you for what? Mm. Probably over two years now. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, mm. I can't remember not knowing you since I've known you. Right. I feel like I've known you for a long time. Yeah, me too. And we have like a genuine friendship because it's more than just creating. Yes. Because like um, we do talk a lot. Yeah. You know, we hang out sometimes when we can. Um, yes. And it's not one of those Hollywood where it's like we only work 
and we never see each other like that. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So it's Absolutely. like we talk a lot. Right. Like, it's funny, before we started the podcast, I remember we talked so much. I'm like, why don't we do a podcast? Why don't we do a podcast? Because this right. is the stuff we talk about on All the phone time. for yeah. the last time. Like, we yeah. talk, we always like, yeah. man, this, this and this and that and that. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I feel the same way as well. Like, I... I think just even um, in our first interaction together, after I was able to express to you like what my needs were mm -hmm. and if you were able to like, you know, like, mm -hmm. hey, I'll work with that. Mm -hmm. I, I felt like on top of me being aligned to myself, just because um, I believe in the higher power, right? Mm -hmm being able to really align myself to that and allow myself to be guided to the spaces that I'm supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. I take that so, so deep, like that's part of my moral. That's mm -hmm. part of what I believe in. You know, when you really put yourself out there and state what you want and then align to it, then the right people will come to you. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was an indicator that, wow, this was, this was, this was real. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. And so it just felt so natural yeah. because I hadn't felt that in LA with yeah. people that I shot with. Yeah. Like you said, it was just, it's very like, you know, you're in and you're out, you yeah. know, like it's for the moment and then you're out of there, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but this felt more in alignment with me. Like, mm -hmm. and it just was, it just fused yeah. and so much magic has come out of it. Yeah. And also with like a, you know, friendship, a great friendship. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just excited. Yeah. I'm excited for what's no, it's coming. it's interesting. Like yeah. I said, it's kind of interesting how things go. Yeah. I could just imagine if I said, man, I ain't want to work with this girl. Give me all this stipulation. You already know me. <laughs> I know, right, right? Yeah. Yeah, it could have it been interesting. Right. But yeah, that's uh, that's one thing um, mm -hmm. I've, I've learned about LA. Mm -hmm. um, it's you don't know who you're going to meet. Right. And, and sometimes you can meet a person that's going to be in your life for probably the rest of your life. Right. You know? And yeah. And you do meet a lot of people that are in for like a day or a right. minute or a week or so. Yeah. But you also, every once in a while, you get somebody that's like in your life. That, right. You know. In your life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's yeah. how I made her feel. Yeah. It's wow. crazy. Just one conversation. One conversation. Yeah. Boom. So it's like, it's very interesting how things go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really like, um, the, there's a conversation we were having maybe last week or mm -hmm. a few days ago where I really, um, it stuck with me when you said, that you always knew what you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, that's how, because I asked you, like, you know, how, what's been one of the things that has really, like, gotten you to where you are, right? And your answer was, like, you've always known what you wanted. Like, mm -hmm. you never wavered in it. Like, you always had a mission. Like, mm -hmm. you had a mission and, and you got that. So I think knowing what you want and knowing that, that the rest kind of just unfolds together, mm -hmm. right? Like, how you met Phil, it was so easy to know because you knew what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, you were aligned, you knew what you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. So that really stuck with me when you said that. Yeah, no, no yeah. and it's one of those things that I do think a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. um, because they'll do something and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, you sometimes it's because you didn't give it enough time for it yeah. to work because right. nothing sap happens overnight. At least nothing that's gonna stay. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, yeah. Or what happens is they um, don't know exactly what they want. Exactly. So yeah. they're mingling with a bunch of different ideas right. and not sure if yeah. it's going to take place or not, you mm -hmm. know? And it's hard to tell which one's which because you're still not clear with what you want. Exactly. You know, whereas for you, like you knew. So anyone that comes into your uh, path, yeah. you're like, oh, boom. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes sense. It's very clear. Yeah. It may have taken maybe a day or two days or even a couple weeks to right. get to know that this is it, but it's like, it's so certain when it is. Right. As opposed to someone that's kind of like, oh, I want to dabble in this and that. Yeah. And then you're meeting people, you're like, you're all over the even, place. You're all over the place. Yeah. And, you know? And, and that discipline is important too, because you got to get that discipline with it. Um, right. Uh, especially in LA, you know, uh, I don't know, but I mean, you know me, but you know, I don't go out and socialize heavy like that. Um, yeah. I'm working on my social skills and I'm trying to get out there more, but it's not because I don't really want to. It's more so, um, I think sometimes these social events or things are more of a distraction than they actually help. Like right. how many times you go somewhere and you see somebody and they tell you what they do and you tell them what they do and then y'all exchange phone numbers and they yeah. never do anything. Let's That's work. That yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it doesn't go nowhere. You know, yeah. it's like, Hey man, I'm an actor. Oh, I'm a producer. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a director. Man, right. let me get your info. Let's do something. Yes. Y'all never link again after that. After that. So that's one of the reasons why I don't do those. Right. But not saying that it's always like that. You mm -hmm. know, it's just um, mm -hmm. you you have to be mindful and you have to also surround yourself with people that 
you are helping mm -hmm. and are helping you. Yes, it has to be. Yeah, because like you have to reciprocate. It's cyclical, yeah. Yeah, so it's like if somebody's helping you, you're helping them. Right. You know, um, yeah. and in the content world, it's very, it's very interesting because it's like you, everybody. I mean, a lot of people now create themselves. You know, right. Like. Like my, you know, like the fr our friend B. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, he, I love the way he creates. He, yeah. he plays all his characters. Right. Because he knows it's, yeah. it's fickle out here. And, yeah, right. And you just have to be able to, 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 to pick the right people. Right. And surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. And everything you do, people are going to help you. Nobody do it by themselves. Right. Like, I've That's not true. done this by myself. Oh, yeah. No, I've not. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And it's like. Yeah. You have to find people that are willing to help you because, like I said, if they're helping you, you're helping them. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You definitely have to be willing to let your ego down and accept the help, right? Yeah, because a lot of people to. want to just do it themselves yeah. because they're like, oh, I have to, you know, be the one that made it myself on my own. And yeah. it's like, no, like. Let... I mean, you can make it on your own Ex too you with can. that, but yeah. guess what? You're not going to get past a certain ceiling. Exactly. Because now you're stuck. Yeah. Because it's only so much you can do. You only have 24 hours in a day. Exactly. You still got to sleep at least five to six hours. Right. Right. You know, so yeah. it's like you, yeah. you do have to be willing. And that's one of the things I, I sometimes struggle with. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not really great at delegating because mm -hmm. I'm so all over the place. I want to edit. Sometimes I want to shoot if I'm not in the scene. Right. I want to direct. I want to, if the writing, I want to be writing. I want to be like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but I have to learn to like delegate. You have to learn to delegate. And just yeah. let it go because right. it also helps with the overall you know, pro pro progress, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so, very true. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's always inspiring, uh, you know, just hearing your story and how you just got to where you're at, right? Like mm. taking that leap and uh, leaving your family home where they were going against oh, man. you. My mom was your hair. My mom was sitting there. <laughs> I remember when I told my mom I'm moving to LA, my mom was like, oh, because I had decided everything before I even told her because I like, I had went to my job mm -hmm. and, uh, and I told him I want to do a transfer because I was working at Macy's at the time. So yeah. I transferred uh, from Macy's Atlanta perimeter to like um, Beverly Center. Right. And I did that and then um, booked my ticket to L.A. And then I went on this app at the time. It's called Roomy to meet mm -hmm. like roommates, mm -hmm. met these people, mm -hmm. paid the deposit. Mm -hmm. And then I had did all that. And then I go tell my mom two weeks before I had to fly out. I tell my mom like, yeah, I'm moving to L.A. And uh, man, my mom, at first she didn't take it serious, I think, mm -hmm. although she did, but yeah. I think she thought I was going to change my mind. Right. And then a day or two go by and she realized that I haven't said, hey, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she started saying, okay, so what's going on? Why do you want to move? And I'm like, man, I'm just not, yeah. it's not working out for me here. You know, right. I'm like not going nowhere in life. Yeah. And um, uh, what is it? And then, you know, fast forward to two weeks game. And I'm like, I got my bags packed and stuff. Mm. Funny thing is, it's like my mom is sitting on the couch. I remember this vividly because it was in the living room. She's like on the couch talking me out of it. Mm -hmm. And she's like crying, mm. trying to talk me out of it. My dad is putting my bags in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so it was such a, because my dad took me to the airport. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> he was ready, yo. My mom is crying, trying to talk me out of this. And I'm sitting there trying to, I'm like, I got to go. Like, everything is done. I don't have a job here. Like, I've yeah. transferred. Yeah. yeah. My dad is putting the bags in the car. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the flight time before me. <laughs> he was ready for you, I was yo. like, we going? Yeah. So I leave. And then um, yeah. we get to the airport. Um, I forgot how much he gave me. He gave me, like, you may get like 50 bucks, like basically if you don't run out, use this to stay longer. To <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> oh my God. So then, um, wow. what is it? So then I get to LA. Uh, it's very late in Georgia because I get here like around 9 p.m. or so. Mm -hmm. um, my roommate picks me up. Uh, and my dad is like, um, I mean, yeah, I called my dad and I told him I made it. And I think he was like at work or something. And then my mom calls me. She's like, how is it and everything? I'm like, oh, go to sleep. I'm good. Everything is good. Right. Aww. And then, um, yeah, yeah she, she was just so worried because she's always been able to like control, I guess, how I live my life. Right. But that one moment where I'm like, okay, I got to really, you know, yeah. take control of my own life. and Absolutely, kinda, yeah. You know, so. Mm -hmm. 
but um yeah it worked out uh so yeah. far you know and, yeah. and sometimes that's one thing you got to do you got to take that chance yes and you have to get out and yeah. you have to not be afraid i mean you have to be afraid because things are i mean know, the fight for sure yeah yeah but yeah. you have to understand yeah you have to be more afraid of what you don't do versus right. what you do do sometimes Ex um mm -hmm. it's the concept of don't be so sure the devil you know is better than the one you don't know right that's true oof there we go or okay is it the devil that you don't know is better than the one that you do know that yeah, you do that. know yeah it's, it's, yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. don't be so sure that the one you don't know is yeah. better than the one you do, you know. do know exactly you know because i was yeah. so comfortable in georgia right i didn't know nothing about la yeah and i just had to move out here yeah to realize that to uh, realize that yeah. yeah so no that's so good and um being able to trust yourself and know what you want right because mm -hmm. you were so sure that you went against like you know like man my family like and that's huge in african home yeah. you know to go against what your family is is really telling you yeah and you know if you I mean? if I'm, I, and one of the things about it is like it's not just going to against your family it's kind of like because it's not just your family that's going to tell you if you're chasing something it might not work out mm -hmm. it's also other people, but you have to also show people that you are willing to do something. You can't just yes. say, like, people do that in all the time in, in Hollywood or LA. They move out here, they say they want to create content, and they never create content. True. And then they get mad with the other people that don't believe in them. Right. You never showed them the reason to believe in you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So it's like people are not just going to believe in you because you said it. That's true. Yeah. It, it it's does like have to you come have action. to, mm -hmm. you know, show. And, mm -hmm. One of those things people think like to do is like um, they'll say, oh, so and so don't believe or support. But it's like you have not like I'm not going to invest in somebody who says I have an idea, but yet don't have a concrete idea. Right. It's like you can have an idea, but like what are we doing to make this idea a fruition? Yeah. A fruition. Right. You know? So it's yeah. like, um, yeah, sometimes. It, it, yeah. Like people. I think that's what my parents were. You know, I was creating in Georgia, but I wasn't creating like I am now. You're not. So yeah. I also then showed them a reason to make you think like I was going to be able to do what I am doing today. Right. It's when I got here, I was like, yeah. man, I really, really have to show them that I can do this and get to it. So, right. So it was it was like healthy fuel. Yeah. Like them just like putting that light on you. Right. Let that fire on you was like healthy for you to yeah. be able to like, yo, I'm going to show y'all like in love. Yeah. Like that, hey, I'm going to, I'm doing this. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And and it's going to work out. Right. Because, again, that's still like, it's not like you were saying, oh, I'm going to go to school, doctor school, yeah. or med medicine yeah, school. Yeah, You're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to LA gonna, to be a I'm going to do something that might not work. Exactly. That's what I was basically doing. Exactly. I, I told my parents, like, I'm going to chase something that possibly is not going to work. Right. And I think people are afraid In of In their eyes, Anybody, for sure. Like, yeah. you know, because, like, that world is very, like, hobby. That's a hobby. I mean, at the time, I think, I remember telling my parents I wanted to do film creation. They thought I wanted to be, like, a Will Smith or a Denzel. Mm, so yeah. they don't understand the that so that. many things yeah. are to be done, right? right to them, yeah. they're like, man, we don't have that many Denzel. It's only one. So how are you going to be the next? Exactly. Type, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and, and I understand it. Right. And like I said, I, when I even tell, tell people, let's create content, I'm not really good at like explaining what I want to do. It's like, mm -hmm. once you see it, then you understand. Then you understand. And I feel like the same way with my parents. I wasn't able to like tell them exactly what I was trying to do. Right. But now that they see it, they kind of understand it They better. understand it, yeah. So, um, and they can trust you more now. Like, they yeah. can trust your judgment. Because all you needed was that one time yeah. for them to be like, oh, well, you know what, actually? Yeah, I know he's crazy right now. He's doing this dress thing. But I guess I trust it. <laughs> Whatever he's going to do with it, we're going to be all right. Okay? Because he's made some good decisions, you so know? Far, that, so far. You know, so far, right? So far. That's, that's good. I always tell you that. You yeah. know, like, just your ability to be consistent, disciplined, and know what you want. Um, and have people around you that are good, like, you know, that elevate you mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. like helps you to stay in that, in that space. Yeah. Right. And, and that's so commendable because a lot of people struggle with that, especially when they come here, Yeah, that's you know, true. like, cause it's so much distraction. Yeah. There's, you know, you think this is your friend, but you don't know. Yeah. How do you even know who is to trust? How do you know what you, like, if you don't know yourself, yeah. if you don't know what you're, what you're desiring. And everybody's out for themselves. Exactly. Yeah. And you came here on a mission. You was like, yo, boom. Man, I came this here. I, I remember. I was like, I, I used to have this concept. Uh, I still have it till this today. Like people will invite you to parties, but they won't invite you to get money. Mm -hmm. They won't. Like people will invite you. Man, let's go out here. Let's go yeah. here. Let's go there. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. They won't invite you to let's start this business. Let's start this yeah. um, project. Let's. Hey, this is. 
I'm willing to do this, let's um, invest together. They will invite you to nothing that yeah. helps you make money or like, yeah. you know, do something with your life. But like most, I'm not saying ever, it's just more likely they'll invite, especially in LA. A lot of people are gonna be like, man, man, you should pull up here, you should pull up there, but it's right. all parties and events and like, right. it's like, you know, I, I, I stay away from that. Yeah. Um, it's not that I don't wanna socialize, it's just, man, I, I know what I'm trying to get to right. and yeah. I don't have the time. Right. To like get distracted by those things. Yeah, and your so. priorities are in order. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people's priorities are not in order. Right. You know, because when you come here and your priorities are not uh, in alignment, like you, then you value, you prioritize things that don't even make sense, right? right? right. But if your priorities are in alignment yeah. and you know your goals and you have that foundation, then yeah, if you go to this event, you know exactly what you're going there for and to do. But a lot of people are still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So they're just going and, and then they get caught up in that lifestyle. Yeah of just trying to look the part but not being it right right it's all talk but it's not really living like that right. you know and that's where people get it you know this is a thing with somebody be like man let's create and you be like oh cool let me uh see what you created right well i was thinking about starting <laughs> <laughs> you know how much, right. how much of that happens yeah yo it's crazy yeah. i love working with people right because yeah. I, I don't know i guess i'm gonna say this on the podcast like i don't care to work with people for numbers Right. Like, I don't care if you have numbers right. or if you don't. Like, right. I really don't care. It does yeah. nothing for me. Yes. It's always more for you. Yeah. Because my right. numbers do for me. Your numbers do for you. Exactly. Right. Uh, but I am interested in seeing what do you do. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, you ever see you ask somebody for a resume? Right. It's like going to a job, right. and applying for a job, and not have a resume. Right. Yes. Chances are the person with a resume is going to get called before you. Before you. You yeah, know, exactly. And, and that's a lot of things in LA. People don't build their resume. Yeah. They all, I hear, oh man, I do this, I do that. And then you ask for proof, and there's no proof. There's no proof. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, you know, you got to know. It's, it's like an exchange. Mm -hmm. I mean, life is about exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So, what can, I, what can I offer you? What can you offer me? Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And let's evolve. Right. Right. So if you don't have that, then what's the point? That's true. You know, and, yeah. and like you said, it's not about the numbers. It's really about what you can offer me mm -hmm. talent wise, if, right. if that's what we're talking about. And are you passionate about what you trying Ex to do? Exactly. You know? uh, because yeah. I mean, look at us. Like, I didn't even know that I had that ability to, mm -hmm. to do that. But mm -hmm. me trusting myself, you trusting me and mm -hmm. opening up that floor. Well, let's work. Mm -hmm. We we birthed something birthed. Man, it's crazy. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know? it's like, it's like we, we, uh, we, I don't know. I think uh, we we definitely did something that I feel like I feel like haven't been done. Yes. Uh, yeah, what we did, I, I don't think has been done. And there's been a bunch of uh, African creators. I'm not saying there is none. Of course. But I'm saying I think we did something that hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and that's beautiful. So, it's beautiful. And I think we're still doing it. So yeah. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah. I'm here for that. So what's yeah. next for Koi? What's next when for Koi? <laughs> I mean, you are an award-winning actress. I feel like I should have done your intro because you didn't do your intro. Let me introduce Koi. Aye. So I have Koi, award-winning actress. <laughs> <laughs> On El Hash TV Entertainment. Hey, man. Thank listen. you for the shout-out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, um, I really, I think that I'm continuing to just do my own, um, my own work, my own, um, you know, continuing to practice and just mm -hmm. seeing where things go. Yeah. You know, like what we started is amazing and I'm just, I'm so like geared towards like mm -hmm. continuing that, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing how it goes. We have big dreams. We talk yeah. about them all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, those are, they're on, they're on track. Yeah. They're, on, they're trending to come. I agree. You know, so that's really what I'm here for and continuing to elevate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's grow, yeah, let's, let's get it. it. Yeah. Let's do it. Africa, here we come. Africa, here we come. We should go to Africa and do a film. Yeah, we should. That's, man, that would be amazing. I want to so bad. Yes. I do. Yeah, hit a few countries. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it would be absolutely incredible. I want incredible. to. I want to. I think, I think that would be cool. I think that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be good. This um, is so amazing. So, mm -hmm. thank you for being my first podcast person. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. This was nice. Also, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys go check out Koi. She sells jewelry, by the way. I don't know if y'all know. Mm -hmm. That's how by Koi. I'm, I'm, I'm shiny, y'all. <laughs> so, Thank you. Uh, check her out. Uh, follow on Instagram. Mm -hmm. At I am Koi official. I am Koi. I was about to say I'm official Koi. I'm official. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, no. I am Koi official. I am Koi official. Yes, on all platforms, really. Subscribe. Peace. Thank <music> you.